buck and rail fence encloses cottonwoods, cherries, and willows planted in 2012 in Partridge Alley. Here we see Partridge Alley before the restoration crew installed the buck and rail fences to protect plants. They installed the fence and the plants begin to grow. A buck and rail exclosure protects a cluster of aspens in Tongue Creek. Inside the buck and rails, the aspens fare better. We make vegetative islands around water sources to attract birds. Brewer's blackbirds nest in the shrubs, which used to only support grassland species. Here is the view of the area before we planted the shrubs and installed the buck and rail. The water source is used by birds, deer, elk, and mountain lions. Bears also use the water source. This bear cools off on a hot day. Magpies congregate on the stock tank edge. This herd of elk uses a natural water source. We enhanced it with bentonite to make a less permeable layer to collect more water. The restoration crew carry beams to the construction site. Each beam weighs at least six pounds. Big show, off them. show off some of my tricks. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. The Exclose Mock Orange, a critical plant for pollinators in Lower Sheep Camp. We expect spotted towhees to nest in the branches of the shrubs after mock orange expands in the exclosures. The exclosures are built narrow so that deer and elk feel uncomfortable inside of them. However, any determined browser can find a way into a buck and rail, so we refer to them as browsing deterrents rather than exclosures. We don't want to exclude all browsers. The deterrents are to reduce browse pressure in the area so the shrubs can grow. The shrubs enclosed here in Sheep Camp are natural. We exclose some existing shrubs and not just the ones we plant. Mock orange isn't very palatable to deer or elk, but it provides good habitat for butterflies and birds. Wild turkeys also use it as a perch. The restoration crew has built at least four miles of buck and rail fence exclosures around ponds and planted or existing vegetation. Bears don't have trouble navigating exclosures. Here is an old metal exclosure in Whaley Draw around a pond. This bear breaks in. Buck and rails are safer for bears and other wildlife than metal exclosures because if an animal breaks in, it is less likely to hurt itself as it exits. Buck and rail exclosures prevent deer, elk, and wild horses from browsing on the plants. We built the first buck and rails along the south ridge of sheep camp around choke cherry bushes. The exclosures resulted in a two inch growth difference from inside to outside per year with only two rails. It increased choke cherry growth. We leave the buck and rail fences up until the crown of the tree is over browse height for deer and elk and the stem of the tree is thicker than a wrist. 
Wrist size diameter is a good size minimum for plants to avoid wreckage by bucks and bulls rubbing off their velvet in the fall. We try to enclose every plant in both small and large exclosures. Small exclosures have drawbacks. They get knocked over and plants outgrow them. This conifer survives until the winter months. Then deer strip it bare. Installed exclosures change the habitat for birds and provide more perches. We must build exclosures to establish all trees and shrubs we plant. It is an underappreciated cost of regional policies to manage deer and elk at high densities.